Okay, uh, this is uh, chapter 1.6, special quadrilateral. So we're on the, the topic of polygons. These are some special type of uh, special type of quadrilaterals. First one is the trapezoid. The trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly okay, one pair of parallel sides. So exactly in the first two words. Alright, so here we have an example where the top segment and the bottom segment is parallel. Over here you have the left segment parallel to the right segment. And these are just uh, special types of parallelograms. Uh, they can be turned on its side, like this one here. Uh, if you see the symbol like this, where it says A, B, and then this symbol is C, B, okay, what it means is that's a symbol for parallel. So on your homework or your assignment, if you're being asked to make these two segments parallel, or label it so they're parallel, then this would be A, B, that would be A, and that would be B. Okay? So you see that symbol is the B. And then, of course, to label the picture, make sure you do the little arrow. Next one is a kite. A kite is a quadrilateral with two distinct pairs of consecutive numerical sides. So N to be consecutive means right next to each other. So if we have that one, this one is right next to that. These two are consecutive. Okay, so these two are consecutive and congruent. So here we have this pair to the side and this side. And these two sides are consecutive. Something that looks like this. This is also referred to as a kite. This is going to be an even more special quadrilateral because they all happen to be congruent. However, it still falls under the, this definition because these two right here, these are consecutive and congruent. Here we have this side and that side. Those are consecutive and concurrent as well. Okay, so this is also known as a kite, but it'll be have a more special name here uh, on the next couple slides. We'll go over that one. This one is a parallelogram. This one has uh, it's a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. Okay, and then of course they must be opposite of each other. So we've got two different examples here. Same thing like I just talked about a little while ago. This is going to be an even more special one. Um, it kind of looks like that has red angles. So here this is your basic parallel program. And when opposites have your parallel, it forces the opposite sides to be congruent as well. There's no way you can swap this out. Okay, so the opposite sides are parallel. Next quadrilateral is the rhombus. It's an equilateral parallelogram. So equilateral means all the sides are congruent. Okay, so this was the picture that I drew earlier. So this is also a kite. Okay, but we would always need the more specific in the case of rhombus. Okay, but this is also how has the properties of a kite. Okay, and then of course opposite sides are parallel. As well. Okay, when you label, when you label, uh, you don't have to put the parallel symbols in this case. Because if all four sides are congruent, then it forces the opposite side to be parallel. Next is the rectangle. 
rectangle. The rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. Okay, so when you throw in these four right angles here, then you're going to wrap opposite sides that are forced to be congruent. Okay, so you have to use two tick marks here though, because it may end up all being the same tick marks, and that would lead us to another uh, special quadrilateral, which we're going to be on the next slide. Okay, so you can actually stop right here, okay, if you wanted to. You don't have to add these parallel angles, okay, but you can if you want to. But if you have this drawn right here, it forces them to be parallel, so I'll just leave those off. And the last one is the square. The square is an equilateral rectangle, an equal angular rhombus, and a regular quadrilateral. Okay, so you want to include the four right angles. Okay, you can't stop there though, because this could also be considered a rectangle. So you need to include the tick marks for all four sides. Okay. And so you actually could stop there. You don't have to put the parallel symbols because it's understood or opposite sides are parallel. That's just a constant reminder. Okay. So just to you know clarify, remember the square is also a parallelogram. Okay, just as so stated earlier. Okay. It's also a quadrilateral. It's also a sign. It also has the properties of a rhombus, and it also has the properties of a rectangle. Okay, those are all the main practicing ones. I think that's all of them. Okay, but more importantly, we want to call it the square. But if I ever ask the question, what are some other names that fall under this category? Then all of these. Okay. Next one, you'll have some of these, and these are uh, I'm going to be on the next patch as well. Sketch and label to create your correct rectangle ABCD. So you know what a rectangle looks like, so you can sketch that. A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. So they have to go in order consecutively, and then diagonal B, D, so it's all in your diagonal. Remember, this is just a sketch, so you just have to be congruent. Intersecting at B. Okay? A lot of times people stop right there when they think they're done. Okay? You have, right now, the sketching is, it doesn't look like the angles are congruent. So you have got to mark them congruent with those right angles. So if you leave off the right angles, you're going to lose some points. Okay? The other thing that you need to do, you don't have anything you mentioned about the sides. You, you either need to put the parallel symbols, which are these right here, okay, or you need to put the tick mark. Okay, these and those. So I'm going to put the tick mark okay, just to be on the safe side. Um, I guess with the angles, with the angles, it is forced to. Uh, it just forces the sides to be. So you could actually stop right there. Okay. However, no, actually I take that back. You don't you have to put those because you're not you don't know if all four sides are congruent or not congruent. Okay, so let's just be on the safe side and just put those two marks, okay? Okay, last one, uh, A B C D is congruent to L M A O. Okay, so N and O are missing. So the one thing that you want to do to figure these out is count the uh, vertical and horizontal distance here. Okay, so L, M, and L goes with A, M goes with B, and so C corresponds to N. Okay, so C corresponds to N, that's how we hear. Horizontal vertical distance from B to C, okay, or I should say B to C, because B is in the end. One, two, three, four, five, and one, two. So that's what you want to do there. One, two, three, four, five, or one, two. So right here would be R. And then, same 
Thank you. 